five biggest HVAC terms that I think you should know. I hear these terms mixed up all the time. And my goal in today's video is to help you. So when you are hear some of these terms, you know what you're hearing and what they're talking about. My name is Josh. I hold a HVAC master's license here in Virginia. I owned a business for over 12 years, and now I currently teach other HVAC contractors how to be better in our business. But before we go any further, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Boulder. We'll get to them in just a moment. Let's dive into this. Number one, I think a lot of folks hear the word heat pump and they are confused. In fact, heat pumps are pretty new to a lot of areas in our country. And a lot of folks don't understand that heat pumps are actually just simply air conditioners, that the outdoor unit is through and through a condenser. It can provide air conditioning. And I actually remember having conversations with customers years ago when I would tell them, yeah, let's do a heat pump. And they would say, oh no, I, I don't want heat. I, I need AC. I need air conditioning. And so they didn't understand that a heat pump is simply an air conditioner. But what's the difference? A heat pump is an air conditioner that can run backwards in the wintertime. So it simply has a reversing valve located in there. It will reverse the flow of that refrigerant and allow that system to provide you heating instead of cooling. And so I don't want to get into all the ins and outs of why and heat transfer. I think people talk about that stuff just to make themselves sound smart. I don't think any of that really matters. You just need to know that in the wintertime, it's going to blow warm air in your home. In the summertime, it's going to blow cool air in your home. It's actually removing heat. I know what it's actually doing. As I said, you're just trying to sound smart. Number two, I hear this term sometimes interchangeable and folks don't know that they're calling it the wrong thing. And that is there are units in our industry called air handlers. And a lot of folks will call them furnaces. They'll use them interchangeably quite often. And there are two two very different things. Yes, they both in split systems will be the unit located inside the home, but I hear it constantly where homeowners will call an air handler the furnace. It's not a furnace. It doesn't have the components that a furnace does. It is a totally different animal. And so not to get too detailed, but a furnace is going to have an open flame. It's going to actually burn a fossil fuel in most cases. Yes, it does have an indoor fan motor. And yes, you can mount an evaporator coil with that furnace so it can provide air conditioning or heating if you do a heat pump and it's a dual fuel system. But in contrast, an air handler is even more basic. So it's not going to have an open flame. It's not going to have a heat exchanger or any of that. It's going to simply be the coil and the indoor fan motor. So it doesn't have any of those components that a furnace has. And in a lot of cases, an air handler may have an additional auxiliary heat kit that was added to that air handler. But just understand they're two very different things. If you have a contractor that says air handler, it's usually not going to be burning gas if he's using the terms correctly or if it's a furnace, it will be burning gas. It's a, either an LP or natural gas furnace, some cases oil, if you've got an old school system at your home. But again, two very different animals. Before I get to number three, let's take a moment to thank Boulder. Are you still using this old remote to control your AC? Upgrade to the Klima Smart Controller and unlock a host of smart functions to help you reduce energy consumption by 30% and automate home climate. And the best part, it's compatible with all brands of air conditioners, mini splits, and heat pumps. Now you can control your AC from anywhere in the world, schedule your AC, see your bills in real time, switch off your AC automatically based on occupancy, and even detect open windows. Everything to keep energy consumption as optimized as possible. Installing it is a breeze. It's a plug and play solution so you can get set up in less than three minutes. Simply stick it on the wall with a renter-friendly magnetic mount or place it on any flat surface with the add-on stand. Upgrade your AC experience today. Thank you to Boulder for sponsoring this video. I'll put a link down in the description of this video if you want to get more information and check out their products. Number three, communicating systems. And so years ago, we used to have systems that would have 24 volts, low voltage wiring, and believe it or not, we still have them today, but that was predominantly all you saw on the market. And so systems would have a number of wires. They would go into the thermostat where switches would open and close and send voltage on those wires. It worked very well, still works well with a lot of systems today. And that would be a non 
communicating system. If you hear someone say communicating, that system really in a lot of cases only needs two wires. It's gonna send data back and forth on those wires. It's very similar to the internet and the equipment has more capabilities because of that. The outdoor unit might be able to say, hey, it's not that hot out today. Let's just barely run. Let's run at a much lower speed and it's a communicating system. It has other capabilities like if something goes wrong, it can send that data to the controller or the indoor unit and say, hey, I'm seeing something wrong here. Send an error code of some type. And again, the system has more capabilities because it's actually sending and receiving data. Most of those systems are doing it with DC voltage and that's how a technician can test it. Very similar to how a lot of mini splits work out there. They have data that can be sent between the units. And so if you hear your contractor use the term that it's a communicating system, that's what they're referring to. Number four is inverters. And I hear this term sometimes not used correctly a lot in our industry. We did a video years ago simply talking about what exactly is an inverter system. And to summarize, it's essentially a system that instead of having a stage, you know, a single stage system, there's literally two stages in a single stage system. And that stage is either off or on, right? There's two modes there. In a two stage system, you're gonna have three modes. You're gonna have off, on, and an in betweeny, right? Maybe it only runs at 70% capacity in that first stage and run at 100% capacity in that second stage. And then finally, an inverter is gonna have a lot of in between. And the analogy I use a lot of times is lighting. So a single stage might be a light switch that's on or off, a two stage or three stage system might be like those old lamps that you could touch it and it would start out at a low light and then you touch it again, it goes a little brighter and so on. But an inverter system would be more like a dimmer switch for that light. There's a lot of in between, there's times when it's just barely running. And to play off the term that we just covered, which is communicating, anytime you hear of a communicating inverter system, it's going to be one of the best technologies we have out there. In fact, we're seeing systems that are communicating inverter systems be more efficient than a lot of the technologies we thought that were superior years ago. Being able to get extremely high SEER ratings and very efficient systems, even in comparison to say geothermal, where it has always had a great reputation. I'm not saying geothermal isn't great, but it is pricey. And so being able to see some of the ductless options that we now have, some of the communicating inverter systems that we now have, HVAC has come a long way. And I'll get to ductless in, in just a moment because I think there's something to note there. And I will add that as a bonus item in just a moment. But number five is SEER, which stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. It's a number that a lot of companies and contractors will attach to that system. They'll use it as a rating for that system and to say how efficient it is. It's almost essentially like gas mileage for a car. It's not always going to be exact because it can change based on your home. But we did see SEER 2 launch a few years ago. It's supposed to give you more of an accurate representation of how efficient that system actually is. But the higher that SEER rating is, the more efficient it's supposed to be. If you start seeing systems get over 18 or 20 SEER, chances are it's going to be a communicating inverter system with a high SEER rating. So that's my five. The bonus one I wanted to throw in there is ductless or mini splits. Those are some terms that we hear thrown around. To me, ductless is pretty simple. It means it's a system that doesn't have ductwork. However, we do see systems on the market that are now mini splits. They are still a mini split type system using the same technology that we've seen used for ductless systems for decades now. But in contrast, a mini split system can also be paired with an array of other options now. So we now see ducted mini splits. We do still see ductless ones that hang on the wall, floor, ceiling, recessed, cassette, all these different options when we're talking about ductless systems or mini split systems rather. And what's interesting that a lot of folks don't understand, including pros in our industry, is not all mini split systems are created equal either because we are seeing some systems have very little 
variable technology in them. They may still be an inverter system, but because of the technology that's in that system, it may not have, but so much that it can ramp down, especially with a lot of the multi-zone systems that are out there. And then finally, seeing some of the VRV or VRF, same thing, depending on what brand you're installing that are out there, having that variable technology, being able to, with some systems, have seven, eight, nine indoor units with one outdoor unit. It's far superior to a lot of other systems out there. And yes, there are now VRV systems out there that can be paired with an indoor air handler or furnace while still being able to be paired with a mini split indoor unit is just crazy to me. Those are some of the most common terms that we have seen. There are more terms coming as we introduce new technologies to our industry that we already know, by the way, are coming. You may say, well, Josh, you know, of course there's new technology that's gonna come. We don't even know what they are. Yeah, we do. I already know because they're being used in other countries and they just haven't gotten to us yet. So with a change to these new A2O refrigerants that we're starting to see, as we move more into a realm, we're possibly seeing A3 refrigerants used in the residential side of things. Will we move into the air to water technology? Instead of pumping refrigerant into the home, we will be pumping water instead to heat or cool that home. There will be plenty of terms to cover, plenty of education to be given, and make sure if you're not that you are subscribed and hitting that bell on our channel so we can keep you informed. Would love to hear your thoughts down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we discuss why air conditioning has become such a luxury in our industry. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button for more HVAC tips. We'll see you next time.